Hey folks, it is geometry time again. I am Mrs. Applegarth and in this section we will be talking about the same thing we talked about last section. We're talking about similarities in triangles, but now we are being specific. We are calling out all you right triangles out there. Um, so we are first going to talk about theorem 7-3 similar right triangles theorem okay the altitude to the hypotenuse of a right triangle divides so the altitude is this divides the triangles into two triangles that are similar to the original triangle and to each other so if you have an altitude and in case you don't remember um an altitude, let me write, give you eyes, um, if you don't remember it, now is a great time to write it down, altitude, <clears throat> it goes from the vertex, like the top part of the triangle, and um, to the base, and it hits perpendicular so when you throw down an altitude it starts at the top and ends in 90 degrees and then what happens when <clears throat> you take a triangle and you cut it like that you create <clears throat> not only this big triangle here um, but you cr create the um, this little triangle here and this little triangle here and what happens is that all three triangles are similar to each other so ABC this big guy here is similar to ACD and remember we've been doing um, <clears throat> Similarity statements, what gets matched up is important. Um, so for the first one, and let me, let me highlight it a little bit differently for you. Um, so for this first similarity statement, um, ABC, and I know it's going to seem nitpicky, and you're going to be like, Ms. Alvar, please. So A is here. It thankfully it matches up with itself. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I highlighted the wrong one. Matches up with itself on the similar triangle, so it matches up with A. Woohoo! Um, B, which is the one also on the base, B here, matches up with C on our smaller triangle, <clears throat> and then. C from our big triangle matches up with D on our little guy. And you may be like, Ms. Hopper, that's ridiculous Like to be so nitpicky about what matches up with what. But when we go to do our formulas um, and uh, start really working with it, we're going to need to, um, we're going to need to know which angles match up. Okay. <clears throat> So if we look at uh, ABC, boom, 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 it's um, pieces, it's A matches up with this buddy's C. It's B well, oh good thing it shares it shares B with its um, bigger triangle. And then C, which is this guy here, matches up with D. All right, and then the little triangles are similar. A is similar to C. D, oh, sorry, C is similar to B, and D is similar to D. So, <clears throat> 
keep these in mind um, because keeping them in order is kind of an important piece. And if you want to go and color code yours too, you can go pencil, pen, and then a different color pen. Like color coordinate, it's <clears throat> definitely draw this picture. Um, it will be important. Okay. What similarity statement can you write relating the three triangles in the diagram? Look what they did to you. They took what we had here and then flipped it over. So <clears throat> anytime I can use a drawing to help me make my life easier, I go ahead and draw because um, what else? So we're going to draw this shape. So um, I know that this is a 90 degree angle. This is where P is going to chill. At its bottom, that's where S is going to be. At its long little side here, that's going to be R. And then um, this little corner here is going to be Q. So now I've got it upright. And up here where there's an A, I know that I'm going to replace it with Q. So. The similarity statements are, I'm just going to use this as our template. I'm going to write three of them. <clears throat> Everywhere there is an A up here, I'm going to make it Q. Everywhere there is a B, I'm going to make it an R, because that's whoop, what it is. Everywhere there is a C, which is the top, I'm going to make it a P. Yay, okay. So once we orient it, the same way as this guy is oriented, it, this is an easy process. So we go um, triangle, Q, R, P is similar to triangle, Q. So it's this big guy is similar to this little guy, and this is 90 degrees, both sides. Q, P, oh, I didn't do D, dark corner, D is the same as S, oh. okay, Q, R, P, Q, P, S, okay. and then triangle Q, R, P again, is similar to triangle. Up here it was CBD. So I'm just going to use my little chart here. C is the same as this P in our triangle. B is the same as R. And then D is the same as S. And then our last triangle, so that was comparing the big triangle to the medium sized one. And the last one is comparing ACD. A, C, D. So it's a little guy, A, C, D. So for us, it's Q, P, S. is similar to C, B, D, or S, R, P. Oh, sorry, not S. It's um, P, add them backwards, <clears throat> R, and S. Yeah, same as before. Okay, so you can either um, orient your triangle so that it matches up with our original and then do your little code, or um, you can write a similar triangle. Anywho, you guys are going to be doing this, um, and it's going to be important because you're going to be given some just triangles and having to throw together um, which ones are similar to, so to make sure you're on track. We're going to talk about <clears throat> the geometric means. A geometric mean is when you have two numbers, A and B, and you put your first number over x, set it equal to your second number over b, and then typically
you will solve for x. So it says, what is the geometric mean of 4 and 18? So this is going to go 4 over x equals x over 18. So we're going to cross multiply, and we're going to multiply 4 and 18 together. So we get x squared equals 72. Ooh, got two mice going on. To solve an x squared, you have to take the square root of both sides. So we're going to get x equals the square root of 72. And then we're going to have to use, um, whenever you're doing radical expressions, and I know that some of my students have completely forgotten radical expressions, but I like to think of it like, what perfect square lives inside of 72? Well, there's several, and, and that means like, what perfect square is a factor of 72? Well, I know, and just because um, I'm super, I love, for some reason, I just love factors. So I know that 72 is 2 times 36. And 36 is a perfect square. So I'm going to take the square root of 36, which is 6, and I'm going to hop that. Once you take the square root, it comes out of the radical. And I'm just left with the 2 on the inside. So the geometric mean of 4 and 18 is 6 root 2. Okay. Corollaries to... Theorem 373, three. the length of the altitude of a hypotenuse of a right triangle is the geometric mean of the lengths of the segments of the hypotenuse. So if you have, so check out your triangle here. Here's the hypotenuse. It is a right triangle. Okay. We have... The segments of the hypotenuse are 2 and 8. So when we're, and you guys, let me just promise you what's coming up. We're going to make a little formula out of this. So 2 ended up here, and 8 ended up here. And then the altitude is 4. So we can go 2 over 4. 4 over 8. Yay, how interesting is that? So we're, we're doing this to build a little formula. Um, the altitude to the hypotenuse of a right triangle, and you guys essentially just write, draw the picture, put the numbers down, and then um, write the numbers, and we with this information just from the picture, you don't, this is kind of wordy to have in your notes and probably not worth the time writing it. Um, so just the picture of the proportion, I think you'll be, you'll be fine as far as notes go. So um, for our second corollary, the altitude to the hypotenuse of a right triangle separates the hypotenuse so that the length of each leg of the triangle is the geometric mean of the length of the hypotenuse and the length of the segment of the hypotenuse adjacent to the leg. Okay, so let's look at these numbers and that'll kind of um, solve the riddle of all these, all this information. So again, just draw the picture. So you guys have a right triangle its hypotenuse is 4, the small piece of the hypotenuse is 1, the short leg of your big triangle is 2, and then let me show you how this goes together. So the hypotenuse is here, the short leg is here, and here and then the leg of the really, really short little triangle is here. So that you get 4 over 2 equals 2 over 1. A 
so and the reason why these proportions come out right is because the triangles are similar. So the proportions, when you reduce them, will end up equal to each other. Okay. Let's use these corollaries to theorem 7, 3 and find the values of x and y. Okay, so the first corollary, and I'm going to um, actually convert this um, into a formula. So let's get three, let's get three letters. Um, let's go x, y, and z. So once I have a formula, I can put it together. So 2 is my z, 4 is my x, and 8 is my y. So when you have the altitude of your right triangle, you use this. So this is... when you have the altitude. So that when when your triangle is cut down its middle, you use this formula. When you have so let's and then we're going to come back and make this a little formula too. So um we got 4 is going to be our x 2 is going to be our y. Actually, let's do, I'm going to change it. 1 can be our x. Actually, that's not. Uh, 2 is going to be our x. 4 is going to be our z. And one is going to be our y. And in fact, it's, con it's consequential. But I just wanted it to um, give us a similar number. Um, so, would you count now? We'll, we'll just use this. It's, it'll be fine. Um, so that way, when we're putting these in our equation, so when you have the hypotenuse, you're going to use this. So you're going to put where there's 4, let's see, that would be z over x equals x over y. Okay. So you guys can use this as reference when we do this problem. So let's go ahead and go, uh, let's use the one where we have the altitude. And what I'm, actually what I'm going to do is let's take a little snip. Okay. So here's what this looks like. Um, so I'm going to label each of these pieces. Oh, man, there's X and Y. Okay, so the little value here from the hypotenuse, I'm going to put in, in my first position here. So let's get our proportion situated. So it's going to go boom equals boom. The little guy from the hypotenuse is going to go upper left. The altitude is going to go lower left and upper right. And then our other piece of the hypotenuse is going to go under that. So now we've got this little equation. We're going to cross multiply. Y times Y is Y squared. 4 times 5 is 20. And remember, 
to get rid of a square, we take this square root. Um, inside of 20, the perfect square that lives inside of 20 is 4. 5 times 4 is 20. So we're going to take the square root of 4 and put it out front. And then whatever's left is going to stay Oop, inside. So y is equal to 2 root 5. Okay, let's get rid of this. So now let's go and grab the other formula. I'm just going to put it down here so I can use it. Okay, so um, these little pieces here, so I'm going to make my proportion boop, boop, equal sign in between. Um, the Z here was the entire hypotenuse, and for us, that is 4 plus 5. That's going to be 9. And then X for this situation is the, that's actually x here as well, boom, boom, and it goes in both spots, the upper right and the lower left, and then ry is just that little piece of the hypotenuse, so for us it's 4. So now we're going to cross multiply, and take square root. Okay. Make sure when you guys are putting this in your notes that you um, definitely draw this picture. Use the corollaries to theorem 7-3 to find the value of x quadratic equations. Oh yeah. Okay. You are preparing for a robotics competition. Here's our little robot. Um, using the setup shown here. Points A, A is here, B, and C are located so that AB is 20 inches. AB is perpendicular to BC, so that's a 90 degree angle. Point D is located on AC, so that BD and AC are perpendicular. We've got the 90 degrees. And DC is equal to 9. I'm going to hop that. So you guys draw this picture so it's a big, of course it's black, so it's a Big rectangle. A is over here. B is at the top. C is on the left. And D is this point down here. This guy at the bottom from A to D is X. And from C to D is 9. We can't see that. Okay, make sure you guys have that drawn on your paper. And we are going to, we program the robot to move from A to D, which is here to here, and to pick up the plastic bottle at D. How far does the robot travel from A to D? So we, we look at the information we have. We do not have this distance here, this guy here. So um, we don't want to use, we actually have the information on the hypotenuse. So we're going to use the hypotenuse one. Too far. So our side length is going to be x. Our entire hypotenuse is z. So we're going to actually use this one, and I'm going to pull that up again so we can see how it's going to fit in here. So when I label these, I'm going to label this x, this is y, okay, you cannot see that because it's too light. So this is 
the 20 is going to go in the X spot here. The X is going to go in the Y spot. And nine plus X is going to go in the Z spot. So we got our hypotenuse here. We have this um, portion of the hypotenuse, which for us is X. We're going to repeat that here. And then um, Z. Sorry, this is 20. Sorry, sorry, this is 20. It's 20. It's 20. It's too many variables running around. Um, and then this little piece here is X. Okay, now we cross multiply and solve. So we're going to get um, 9x plus x squared when we multiply 9 times x and 9 times x squared. And 20 times 20 is 400. I need everything on one side of the equation. And I'm going to make it like a little quadratic. So it's going to be x squared. I'm going to minus 400 from both sides. plus the 9x minus the 400. So I'm going to factor this. OK, so I need two numbers that multiply to give me negative 400 and add to give me positive 9. So that is going to be negative 16 and positive 25. I did have to pause it to, to figure that one out. So don't, don't feel like if you didn't get this one on the first try, it's fine. So when I solve x minus 16 equal to 0, I get x equals 16. And when I solve x plus 25 equal to 0, I get x equals negative 25. None of my distances can be negative, so it has to be x equals 16. Um, of course, I know this is kind of wonky, but if you um, practice it, um, you can kind of figure out how to put stuff together. Um, Sometimes I just go long side, short side, medium side, and I let that guide my direction. And I can show you guys that in class when you come. Okay, and now you guys have the practice. Did I really put, I put 44 and not 45, okay. All right, and here's that number 55 for you. All right. <clears throat> Remember, I have office hours. If you have any questions, um, concerns, or just want to work on some homework, um, send me a reminder. Let me know you're coming, and have an amazing day.